Yo, what's poppin'? Welcome to Broman Rhapsody. This is where we review cars and motorcycles. And today we are at Motorcycles of Greensboro with the man, the myth, and the legend. It's the professor, you guys. Ah, bro, welcome back home, brother. Thank you, sir. Uh, I guess we're all multi stradaing it all out today. Might as well. Many roads. Why not? Uh, many, many roads. Many roads. Many roads. And speaking of many roads, this one is really intended for a whole lot of different <laughs> stuff. Wow. Not, not just any road, even it's when there's roads. no roads. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 2023 Ducati Multistrada V4 Rally. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about the bike. Of course, we have the professor. We're going to get a little bit of a history lesson, maybe a practical lesson. We'll see what he's in the mood for. I'll show you the features of this motorcycle. I'm going to take it out on the road, share my thoughts with you guys, talk about the cost of ownership, and assign it a Broman score. But before we do any of that, if you're new to Broman, give us a like and hit that subscribe button. We put out content every week, and your support would mean a lot. It's me, it's your boy, bro, and I am your Broman. The Multistrada was a project that was started, oh man, early 2000s, I want to say, maybe even late 90s. Hmm. Anyways, young man comes to Ducati as a designer last, by the last name of Ter Blanche. A lot of people might, uh, might be able to associate him to the design of the 999. Okay, yeah. Right? Yes. Uh, the Hyper Motard, I think, is one of his. Well, and then he puts out a, uh, you know, he designs a Multistrada way back in the day, and it came out as a small displacement bike. It was a 696 and, mm -hmm. you know, little things like that. And back then, it was one of those polarizing designs where they either loved it or you didn't because the top end moved with the handlebars the bottom end didn't it was just kind of a awkward yeah, looking bike. yeah and then it had that look with the two headlamps yeah, stacked yes, on top of he, each other he liked that dual headlights yeah because yeah, that, that he, was a big was, thing at that time like yeah uh, ducatis yeah. mv augustas yeah everybody everybody had headlights. that yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so forward fast forward a couple of years uh ducati puts out the enduro yeah. and, and you know the whole idea of off-roading starts really settling in. Mm. Earlier this year, we reviewed the Desert X. We did. So now the idea of off-roading is definitely mm. in, right? And uh, just recently, they released a Multistrada Rally, which in essence is um, their true adventure bike. Now that I think about it, we never really covered all the little nuances or all the little differences mm. in the Multistrada family. No, we did not. Because it is a family now. It you know? is, it's it is. Because you got the Multistrada V2, yes. which is a very well-balanced motorcycle, mm -hmm. very street-oriented, comfortable. Mm -hmm. Then obviously you get to the V4, and in the V4 you can have, you know, you, can, you have a choice of either cast wheels or spoke wheels. Mm -hmm choice of colors hmm. right you got red white or gray hmm. the electronics are getting more and more sophisticated hmm. with more and more choices okay. uh, and as you mentioned including the little button where if you just push and hold the bike goes Bruh. Bruh. how or, cool is that right. how cool is that right? when you put it in enduro mode it raises hmm. you know so and what it does really is it just you know it just takes some of the preload out of that and it just allows the weight of the bike to squat it down a little more. I like how it's got a little skid plate at the bottom. Yes, yes, yes. And then yes. I love these panniers, man. These are I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the panniers that come on the V4S too. Yes. They look so pretty though. They do. Like if I I would be so scared to take it off road if I if I had it. Yeah. I wouldn't want dings and dents, but these oh man, these just look ready right. for off road riding. Beat Go beat them up, yeah. Now, these on the rally, these panniers can be mounted both uh, sway sway uh -huh. or solid. It does come with bars uh, with uh, rails that allow for you to have solid mount. So, if you are primarily road riding, you want this, this motion. One, yeah. If you're primarily off-road riding, you want the stay. Then stay you want them to stay solid. Yeah. And it allows for that as well. So you can adjust the angle of the TFT screen depending oh. on how tall you are. Oh yeah. Yeah. That knob underneath there. You see that knob down there? Yes. Yeah. You you turn that and it changes the angle of, of the screen. Oh so that, wow. If you're six foot four and you need to tilt it up, you can. Perfect. And if you're short like me, 
You can tilt it. Turn it down, yeah. Man, this is awesome. It is nice, isn't it? You mind if I do a quick walk around of this bike? Not at all. It's got the little beak. Uh, you have the adaptive cruise right there and the high windshield. Now this windscreen on this motorcycle is about 1.8 inches taller and about 0.8 inches wider than the regular uh, Multistrada V4S. If you look closer at the fairing, see it tells you it's a rally. The second way you can tell that it's a Multistrada rally and not the Multistrada V4S are the spoke wheels up front. And this has your adventure saddlebags. Uh, so there's aluminum saddlebags. Now in the front it's got dual 330mm disc brakes with Brembo calipers. As for the rake angle, this has a 24.7 degree rake angle. What's the rake angle you ask? We'll draw a perpendicular from the steering mount for the fork tube. That's your rake angle. Shorter the rake angle, the more nimble the bike is, and larger the rake angle, the more stable it is at higher speeds, highway speeds, and such. Sadly, no single-sided swing arm. This is a Multistrada, so you have the regular swing arm. You have a little bit of that trellis frame there. Uh, that's a, it's a really tall bike there. This has a seat height of about 33 inches. Another cool thing about this bike, this has a 7.9 gallon fuel tank. So, so this is the Ducati Multistrada key fob. Um, tells you it's a Ducati on one side. That's pretty, pretty cool. And you have this little key for your saddlebags and other places in case you know you lose power or you're out of juice or whatever on the back, on the key fob. Yeah, as for the saddlebags, you access these, put the key in there, turn it around, and boom. There's your saddlebag. And it's a pretty deep and spacious saddlebag here. Uh, a good amount of storage space. The handlebar controls on the left hand side you have your passing lights and high beams push it out for high beams hazards uh, these are to make ad adjustments to your suspension cruise control suspension setting mode setting uh, turn signals and down here is the joystick uh, to make menu selections and whatnot. And under, and then out to this left is the horn. As for the controls on the right hand side, is this, this is your kill switch, your starter button, and at the bottom is the DRL light. On the right hand side, you also have a cigarette lighter style power outlet. Now on the left hand side, you have a little storage space here for your phone. So you could put your phone in there and it's got a USB outlet in there. Turn it on. The screen comes up, tells you Ducati, boom, Multistrada V4 Rally, how cool is that? And then you get that beautiful screen, man. And that screen gives you a lot of information. Uh, so you have your tachometer, with, which gear you're on, uh, time, your IMU selections, ABS, traction control, all of that. Uh, oil temperature, outside temperature, fuel, fuel gauge, uh, speedometer, which riding mode you're on, and your uh, selections, your pre-selects. Let's go and toggle through the menu and see what are the different options that I get here. So if I flick it up, it goes from Adaptive Cruise to Ducati Connect. So you can use the app to connect to, to your, you can connect the phone to the bike, to your helmet and all that. You have your setting menu, heated seats, volume control, phone, music, and back to Adaptive Cruise. So let's go into settings menu and see what we have. So it starts off with the riding mode. If you go up, in information, measurement units, language, turn signals, trip master position, Bluetooth, tire calibration, lap timer, service interval, date and time, blind spot detection, it's got a blind spot monitor, pin code, this is in case uh, you've misplaced your key fob, you can still start the bike using your pin code, backlight, DRL, fuel indicator, and back to riding mode. Now if you go into riding mode, you have these different riding modes. You have sport, urban, enduro, touring, four different modes. And if you select one, the cool thing is it tells you you can you can play around with stuff. So if you're doing power, see the engine's lit up, so you know it's got a, you're doing something with power. Go into traction control, the rear rear tire lights up, so that's what you were playing with. ABS, front brakes, rear brakes. Um, Wheelie control tells you it's going to keep the bike down. EBC, engine braking, the engine's lit up as well as the rear tire. Quick shifter, yeah, the quick shifter lit up. Suspension, 
and preloads, which is pretty cool, right? Uh, preloads, so you have rider, rider plus baggage, rider and passenger, rider and passenger and baggage, or you could keep it at auto, so which is auto leveling. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about this place I call home? Motorcycles of Greensboro. First, we're motorcyclists. Yes. And then <laughs> we work at Motorcycles of Greensboro to make a living at it. Yeah. So that we can turn around and buy more motorcycles, more motorcycles and, and parts more and accessories. And, yeah, yeah. And all that kind of stuff. So and that's who we are. We're we're just a, a group of motorcycling enthusiasts. You know, within the walls of the Motorcycles of Greensboro, there must be. Oh, geez, I don't know how many years of combined experience because Paul's been riding his entire life, Andrew's been riding most of his life, I've been what? riding most of my yeah. life, Rourke has been on two wheels for a long, long time. time, Brandon. Uh, Maybe wow. 300, 400 years. There's probably 300, 300 years, years of combined mine. motorcycling experience in all segments. Yes. From off-road to track days and to long distance. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, just I watch Paul just sit on the bike and go for days. Oh, days, yeah. You know, uh, I don't know how he does it. This is what it is at Motorcycles of Greensboro. A bunch of motorcycle enthusiasts, and these guys here, they're absolutely superb. They're friendly, they're knowledgeable. You have questions, they'll have answers. Come down, check them out. I'll put their website link in the video description below. And who do, who should they say send them to you, Professor? They've gotta let us know that the Broman sent them. So that way they'll walk them straight into the family, and they get all the stories. And all, all the fun, fun stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah, so tell them the Broman sent you, and you'll be instantly part of this family. Well, Professor, we've been talking for a long time. Do you happen to know what time it you, is? You brought your watch? I did. Oh. You know what time well, it is. you can tell me that it's right o'clock, right? <laughs> it's right o'clock. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So if you guys are new to Broman, give us a like and hit that subscribe button. We put out content every week and your support would mean a lot. All right. Off we go. So let's start off our ride with a couple of u-turns and see how this puppy maneuvers with the steep brake angle and all that yeah u-turns no problem no problem whatsoever we can keep doing this all day you guys all day it's time to do our second test the pull test Wow, wow, wow. The Panigale, I mean, uh, I, sorry, I got a little <laughs> extra happy there. Uh, the Multistrada V4, this big 1158cc engine. Oh my God, it can pull. Oh my God, it can. <laughs> Those shenanigans aside, let's talk about the first impressions of this motorcycle so we're back in touring mode uh, <laughs> we'll get go back into sport mode later on uh, first impressions so I'm sitting up uh, very upright uh, no reach for no I do not have to reach out for the handlebars these handlebars are nice and wide and my legs they are not bent weirdly I'm sitting very comfortably I like this seat as well okay stop sign coming up Front. Let's check out our brakes. Front brakes only. One finger braking. Ploop, 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 ploop. No problemo. Now, this is a tall bike. Uh, I can touch the ground with both feet, but I'm kind of like sort of on my tippy toes at the normal height uh, of the motorcycle. All right, so at the lower setting, I can flat foot it with one leg very easily or one foot very easily if I put both feet down. Not flat footing it, not on my tippy toes, but I'm like in the middle. See, it says that that's minimum, so that's min. All right, so how do I get the suspension to do its thing? You press and hold the suspension button until this thing starts blinking, and then you do the plus or minus. Minus to make it lower, plus to make it get it higher. Simple as that. To continue with the first impressions, I am very comfortable, man, sitting on this bike and riding it. Legs are comfortable, my butt is comfortable. I don't have to reach out for the handlebars, none of it. Let's talk about wind protection. Well, this is a slightly taller windshield and I'm not, it's at its lowest setting, right? Yeah, so I can pick it up if I wanted to. 
or just push it down I'll leave it at its lowest setting it's a warm day today so the wind does it's not bothering me uh, but this has a surprisingly good amount of wind protection oh red light Ugh. as I was saying this has a pretty decent amount of wind protection I'm not getting hit by a lot of wind uh, I'm getting a little bit of wind in my uh, shoulders and a little on my helmet over the top of the uh, windshield and through the sides but not bad at all yeah. and check this out for the balance how does how's the balance on this bike well it's incredible <laughs> it's a Ducati man even with those uh, rally tires it's pretty good and um, yeah it's not twitchy or anything like that and it's a big bike so it's still a V4 uh, and I like it I actually like it I like how comfortable I am okay so let's talk about the riding mode so I started off in touring mode so in touring mode uh, so in all of the riding modes your those variables change a little bit like your traction control engine braking wheelie control ABS everything changes on them uh, for each of the modes and you can customize them as um, as you want I think that that's something you can do on most Ducatis and so in touring mode throttle response is pretty decent um, and the ride is actually very comfortable uh, yeah, the throttle isn't twitchy or anything like that so if you wanted to get around people give it some gas <laughs> It's still a very rev happy engine man. It's that V4, uh, the 1158cc V4. Oh my god, that thing is so rev happy. So rev happy. <laughs> another, of the cool, another cool feature is the Ducati quick shifter. So no hands, no clutch. I can shift up. Uh, keep, remember what the professor says. Quick shifter, throttle open when you're shifting up and throttle close shifting down. So let's go try it again. Hands here. Boom, into fourth now. What? Oh man. And check this out, man. Handling is amazing. Ooh. And this, I'm in touring mode. Dang. Dang, dang. In touring mode, y'all. <laughs> All right. Can we change modes on the fly? I think we should be able to. So I'm not going to go into enduro. Let's go urban. Close throttle. That brings up urban mode. Let's go. Your display changes over here. Tells you it's an urban. Do, 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 do. So urban mode is designed. Is a de designated mode when you're uh, riding around town in traffic in urban settings. Duh. Right off the bat in urban mode, throttle response is a lot different. Um, you have to wring the throttle's neck quite a bit for it to respond. Uh, but it it will respond <laughs> but you have to wring its neck a little bit like come on man like you have to coax it like come on come on come on guy let's go let's go yeah, what I mean by that is like you have to really twist it twist the throttle in urban mode for uh, before the engine starts responding or the bike starts responding uh, and respond it will <laughs> and engine braking on this thing is crazy like see i have the throttle open now i'll let it go look no brakes i'm not using brakes and it's slowing down no brakes man i have it covered but i'm not using the brakes that's how awesome the engine braking is on these guys man mm -mm -mm. now granted it's in urban mode so i guess those things are at a higher setting uh like your engine braking would probably be at a higher setting uh but man this is fun like i've always i i have always liked the movie strata line uh the v4s the pike's peak is something i completely fell in love with uh, and the rally man this is a really 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 solid bike i wish i could take it through some gravel or something to show you guys uh, or to see how good it is on gravel and stuff but i'm assuming this it should be really good so i'm just doing a road test per se so I'm not even gonna go into um, the enduro mode but let's try out sport mode shall we because why not sport mode close throttle boom if the sport mode is red <laughs> all right so let's do a rolling test right so fourth gear 44 and roll on the gas oh damn 
my god! Oh my god! That was a roving test? <laughs> I love this V4 engine, the V4 platform, I love it. On all the Multistradas that I've tested, this is the third Multistrada V4 that I'm testing out. The S, the Pike Peak and the Rally. Man, that engine grunt and the way it picks up speed and power. Oh my God, it's crazy. It's crazy, you guys. Sport mode is by far the funnest mode. By far the funnest mode. And I'm, you're just gonna act stupid uh, in sport mode all day long. The power is right there. Like it's so accessible. Sport mode, the funnest mode, then comes touring and then urban. Haven't tried out enduro, but really no point trying out enduro mode on like paved surfaces. Man. The one thing I got I forgot to mention or um, mention earlier are these wide handlebars, right? These are so comfortable and you know it they are so useful when you're trying to flick this bike around. Well, is it a good bike for commuting? Yeah, this is a great, this should be a very good bike for commuting. Uh, the seat is comfy, the seating position is comfy, the riding ergonomics are good. You have those uh, saddlebags, you can throw stuff in there. Uh, decent wind protection, so you shouldn't have a problem whatsoever. So is this a good bike for uh, touring? These motorcycles, uh, they're more like adventure tourers, sports tourers in that category. And yeah, this should be very good for touring as well. Uh, like I like a windshield, this has a windshield. I like a fairing, this has kind of a fairing. Uh, decent amount of storage space. Yeah, this does not have speakers per se, but there are very few sport touring bikes that come with speakers and such. Uh, but what I'm looking for is the seating position. It's comfortable. Wind protection is very, very good. Like check out this, my hand over here, right? Nothing, nothing, nothing. I get a little push from here. This is, this is where I get some air. That's it. And same thing on this side, all the way here. That's how good this is. So yeah, touring should not be a problem whatsoever. Now, is this a good bike for beginners? New, no, new, no, new. No. Well, first of all, it's, it costs a pretty penny. Secondly, it's extremely powerful. It's a tall bike, it's powerful. Insurance is gonna be high. Uh, a, it's a Ducati. B, it's got a lot of power in it. And C, you know, if you're a first time, like someone who's brand new to motorcycling or whatever yeah insurance rates are gonna be high anyways and on on italian bikes yeah gonna be very high see nope beginners stay away what about the cost of ownership bro man what about the cost of ownership Conclusion. This motorcycle is just insane. All the multi trailers are insane, man. I didn't get to take it off road. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I personally would like to take a bike like this off road, but that's just me because I think this is too pretty to be taken off road. But you could always stand up and ride. So, I mean, man, I love the seat, the seating position, the handlebars the way the engine responds and the bike handles uh, it's got riding modes what else do you want it's, it even has blind spot monitoring and uh, your adaptive cruise so it's got all the technology goodies that you might get in a um, in a premium motorcycle I'm in love with the multi stratas man and this is no exception if you ask me this is a simply amazing amazing bike if you're looking to get one, don't think about it, man. Head on down to your closest Ducati dealership. Take one out for a spin and fall in love with it. <laughs> well, thanks for watching, you guys. Keep your knees in the breeze. And I'll see you soon. Bro out.